<laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> we just gotta get through the intro. Welcome to the Park Stop Podcast, episode 10. My name is Alicia Stella. With me as always is my co-host Ian. Hey kids. And today we have a very special guest, Christopher Ripley of the HHNUnofficial.com website and the Scare Zone podcast and also Diz After Dark is here and we're going to have a discussion about Halloween Horror Nights. Good evening and happy nightmares. How are you? Yes. What's up, Christopher? Nice to have you, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's it's not even summer yet. So you know what that means? Let's talk about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I talk about Halloween all year round. So I know. I'm, I'm happy with that. I was telling some family, I'm going to go do a show about Halloween. And they're like, really? (laughs) You just don't understand. (laughs) The houses are going to start in a month in like two more years. Watch. Well, uh, uh, on on Twitter, one of my friends, she's actually building uh, well, getting all the sets together for her haunted house that she's building in her house for this Halloween. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. uh, That's the dream. One day I want to retire and just do like the be the crazy person with the haunted house in in the neighborhood. So there's already been several house announcements for both Orlando and Hollywood. So for the new segment of today's show, we're going to talk about all the officially announced ones. And then later on in the show, we'll talk about some of the rumors and maybe our own speculation of what we expect this year. The most recent announcement was the Universal Monsters uh, yeah. haunted house. I hate that. If anybody knows me, you all know I really hate that a lot. <laughs> so excited for that. It's going to be so good. <laughs> It's it's weird because we've been talking about classic Universal monsters uh, in various ways, whether it be the merchandise that's been showing up in the parks or hoping they're going to build a land at the new theme park. And now we get uh, a new haunted house. Well, I have to say, I mean, the the classic monsters have been at Halloween Horror Nights many times in the past, but I don't actually remember anybody being this excited for them. <laughs> that's a very good point. I mean, yeah, there has been... In Orlando, at least, they've all been separate, right? Have we had, other than um, the 25th house, like, have we had anything with multiple monsters? Yeah, sort of back in the day, but I'm talking a very long time ago. Oh, like the first two years. Weren't there like two or three houses that had them? Like, kind of mixed up? I don't remember exactly. Oh, you're talking a long time ago now. Yeah, Logan that is always a long does time this ago. to me. He, he drops me in it and says, What was the house that was the second from the left on Soundstage <laughs> 25 back in 1998? And I go, Logan, I don't remember. I'd have to look I, it up. I think the very first. <laughs> I think, what was the first? Was it called Fright Nights or something? The very first Halloween Horror Nights had a classic monsters uh, yeah. haunted ex- attraction. It did. That that was a, a a collection of different scenes from different films, all used probably without licensing rights, and, you know, <laughs> and, and the, all of the photos and blueprints have been burned ever since. But you know, oh, um, but then prior to that, I mean, Universal has always really pushed their monsters. I mean, they they were doing Halloween type events before Halloween Horror Nights, which usually always predominantly featured those monsters. But for this year. And I think it's possibly to do with last year at Hollywood, yes. where their house was so well received. I think it's made everybody just that bit more excited in Orlando to, to think that they're going to get something similar to what Hollywood had. Yeah, I think people are actually hungry for the monsters because, I mean, like Alicia said, we've been talking about them a lot and everyone in our group has been talking about them and everyone seems to be excited for them. So whatever triggered it is fine with me. I'm happy to see them getting some attention. I think it's all the bad movies. The more bad monster movies they put out, the more we crave the original, like actual Mm -hmm. classic Mm -hmm. monsters. Um, Or just a good new version. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So the uh, I'm going to read the description for the Orlando house real quick. It says, come face to face with Dracula in his gothic castle, the wolfman in a dark Bavarian forest, and the man-made monster within Dr. Frankenstein's lab. Good on them for not calling him Frankenstein. And if you survive them, you may still you still may encounter the vicious creature of the Black Lagoon, the ancient evil of the mummy, and more. Mm. Um, so it sounds like a description for pretty much last year's Hollywood house, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Hollywood house was very good, but you've got to remember that, generally speaking, the Hollywood version of Halloween Horror Nights is not in the same league as Orlando. So it was one of those ones that was like a smash hit home run in Hollywood, 
So when it comes to Orlando, it probably still does need to up its game slightly just to compete with all the other amazing houses that Orlando puts out. Because don't forget, Orlando, no matter where you go in the world, the Orlando event is definitely the best of all. <laughs> As they call it, the nation's premier Halloween event. Exactly. Exactly that. So, you know, I, I'm very excited for it. And um, I, if I think back to some of my favorite houses, one of my favorite houses, a little known house, was in 2009 with the remake of The Wolfman, the... Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember Benicio that one? Del Toro. Yeah, Benicio Del Toro, right? That house was phenomenal. And, and it, it had this amazing scene where you were being chased through a forest. Um, and it did act... I mean, it was in one of the big sound stages, but it actually did feel like a forest. So they mentioned that in the text there um, about the Wolfman yeah, uh, in the woods. Yeah, Forest. Mm-hmm. You, you know, so if they remake that scene, I will be very, very happy. Yeah, that does sound really good. I think I was there that year, but didn't get into that house. Uh, so now oh. I'm feeling like I missed out. Oh, man. <laughs> well, disclosure, I'll probably stop and try to make friends with the wolf, man. Don't hate me, people. <laughs> is, there, oh. is there like a scene that you would like, as far as the classic monsters, is there a scene you would like to see, like even at a top of your head? Is there something you would like to see? Ooh, that's that's difficult. I mean, the, the thing is as well, is the most recent um, iteration of these creatures was in what was it now was it 20 was it 2009 as well when they did frankenstein and dracula oh was that the, uh was that the same year? movie no no they did i think it was 2009 or 2010 they did do um they had the classic monsters at the event oh, oh um, sorry and they they sort of completely altered them so they didn't really look or appear anything like the films um, and the only time they've ever done anything recently that's very similar was the same, I think it was the same year when they had the, the Usher. Do you remember the Usher? Mm-hmm. And yep. in his house, he had like the Phantom of the Opera and uh, yeah. different bits like that. And that was very true to the original film. So in Hollywood, they didn't do it true to the film. But if they were, right. going back to your original question, to make the house fit from the films from the 30s, 40s and 50s, I mean, I'd be really... Uh, keen to see some actual and scenes recreated from those films. I am a little concerned because the poster for this new house does have like the over dramatic, <laughs> the over dramatic like uh, scary Frankenstein monster and the like super scary Dracula mouth. So I am a little concerned that they're going to do like they did in Hollywood, where it's like a heightened, more scary version of the classic monsters. I would much rather see it be the actual classic style, uh, especially like Doctor Frankenstein's lab or. I mean, Creature of the Black of the Black Lagoon is gonna. I don't think you can make him any more scary. He's already creepy enough, so oh, I'd be yeah. happy to see something like that. Um, so, do we know of any differences between the Orlando version and the Hollywood? What's the rumors for? Because they they already had one last year, so this year they have a different poster um, with two of the characters fighting, right? Yeah. So that they, they've chosen to do a house that's based on Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. So they, they've gone uh, more specific that they're going to remake that film from 1943 or whenever it was. So that's that's interesting in its own way. Yeah, they're uh, already into the sequels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that's quite interesting. But in terms of, of what um, Orlando are doing, um, I mean, I'm just looking now at a um, some paperwork I got here, and it seems to suggest... That they might be in building 108. Now remind me, what building is that? I don't know. I'd have to look up the map. Is it is it the new parade building? Oh yes, yeah. It's where yes, the it seeds is. house was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the really big one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. So that so they could go in either direction. I mean, they can have it, you know, quite long, or they can have it quite intense, or they can have it quite intimate, like that house was. So it's probably up to them, really, how they, they go with it. But I think they'll probably do it on a much grander, larger scale than what Hollywood did, because Hollywood's uh, houses aren't always the longest. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, a big, of- I'm a big fan of the collection of se- sequences, too. I like, like, every time you enter another room, it's like, I'm in another movie now. So I'm actually excited for this one a lot, for yeah. Orlando. Yeah, it's going to be episodic. I can't see how it would all be one big story, if you like. So it would be neat if they had like a conclusion where they're all teaming up together to attack you, like some kind of, uh, you know, finale. They mm. each get their own intro, and then there's a finale where they return. That would be neat. 
Well, the thing is, what's quite interesting is a lot of people say, oh, well, it's the Universal Monsters. They can do what the hell they like. Actually, they're actually restricted uh, by their own in-house department with what they can and can't do oh, with yeah. this IP. Because I was going to ask, is this technically an IP or an original? And um, some people are on other sides, but I think according to the actual people working on it, it is technically an IP and they have to get you know approval through yeah. Universal Pictures. Yeah, I mean, it is technically both. I mean, it, it is an IP, <laughs> definitely, but with an original twist. And it still has to be approved in a very similar way to which all the other IPs are approved. Because don't forget, you know, the Universal Monsters saved that studio from bankruptcy. And they oh, have yeah. done many times through the years. So Universal Monsters are to Universal what Mickey Mouse is to Disney. So exactly. they're going to look after them. They're going to push them. They're going to, you know, keep the brand going. They're going to get that merchandise sold. I mean, how many, just from this announcement, looking at your social media feeds, how many people have gone out and bought the DVD? Uh, I know a lot of people that have been buying all the awesome Tervis cups and stuff at the parks. I've been seeing lots yeah. of pictures and uh, there's a shirt in particular I wanted to get. So yeah, I think that the interest has gone up. I would love to see the, uh, the Bloomhouse film actually pay, like work out so that we can get some more classic style, low budget horror movies with starring yeah. these characters. Yeah. And that's what they need to be. They don't need to be, you know, monster impossible with Tom Cruise spending, you know, <laughs> half a billion dollars. They don't, they don't need that. They, they need to be cheap, uh, low budget. That's where horror works out financially. That's yeah. where it does its best work. It, it was a fluke. Chances. 2000 was a fluke and i think they think that's the formula like like the mummy yeah. with brendan fraser was a great action film and they think well let's turn all of them into action films it's yeah but like, the mummy you know, was hilarious too it was like the perfect mix it was almost yeah, indiana was, joan horror yeah. it, it is joan yeah horror. it's a yeah. perfect mix and that yeah. dude got lucky once and they tried to bet on him again with van helsing and it didn't work yeah unfortunately yeah, that's true yeah, that was lightning in a bottle and, you know, they've been trying to recapture it, but we're in a whole nother, you know, we're 20 years out. I think it's time to bring back the original reason why we love the monsters. Because they're awesome. So they're moving creepy. on, <laughs> moving on to uh, another, an actual original house, uh, which is technically based on something they've already done. Uh, the Nightingale's Blood Pit was announced for Orlando. Ancient Rome is suffering its worst drought in centuries. The ruthless emperor has declared that gladiatorial games to continue nonstop until the rains return. The gruesome bloodshed of the games is horrifying enough, but then come the creatures. So the Nightingales are a returning creature from 2011. Mm, mm. Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with this. I mean, I'm interested to see what they do with the sets on this. Because, um, you know, the, the last time that they did a um, an ancient, uh, sort of ancient's house, they had sort of Greek mythology and things, um, that was so well received um, in their profession. It, it won lots of professional awards at different conventions and things. Um, so they've got a sort of a good track record in producing things that are sort of aged looking. So I'm interested to see that this is obviously based in ancient Rome. So, I, you know, what they can do with that and how they're going to do that, because obviously that's a hell of a lot of stonework in theory. So they've got to build, <laughs> you know, palladiums and coliseums and maybe ruins, you know. So I, th I think that'd be interesting. And well, that's the thing, too. Like if you're talking about the Colosseum and like a gladiatory games, it's weird like this might be in a sprung tent. So are we really going to feel the scope of like the mm. gladiator games? If it's not in a soundstage or, or we just kind of like around the outskirts of the theater, you know, more importantly, do I get to pick up a weapon and fight with the gladiators? Cause that would be a fun part of the house for me. I feel like the story is that the, the nightingales, cause apparently uh, they come out and prey on the dead and dying. So, Maybe this is after so our games cool. and we're there and they're they're running out of meat to feast on, so they find us. <laughs> yeah. That'd be I mean, that'd be cool. I think the imagery looks awesome. I was sold just on the picture when I first saw that just the picture is fine with me. I'm stoked for it. Yeah, and I, I, I've also heard that it's in a sprung tent. So I, it's gonna be tricky, that's for sure. It will be neat. A great co I like I like the idea of the costume. If they have people with swords like battling and then get attacked <laughs> off to your side as like a way to start this house out, that could be pretty cool. Oh, so good. Yeah, I mean they could also build 
you know, a really nice decorative facade as well that sort of, you know, looks like you're walking into a temple or something, you know. It's... Oh, with fire. As long as there's a torch fire. outside, I'll be sold on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, some of those old coliseums did have the cloth that pulled back for like the canopy. So they could do that to hide the top of the tent too, if it's lower. Mm. Who knows? I mean, there's lots of stuff they could do. I don't mind seeing the tent. Like, you know, when Michael Myers, like has a, when they have the house out there and then you can see the tent in the background, I don't care because the house looks so cool. So I can deal with the, the, them not blocking the view. Yeah. I mean, usually speaking, historically, the sprung tents have always had the more uh, in your face, intimate houses. So yeah, yeah, you would tend to think that that's where they'd be going with that but, <laughs> but who knows they also have had Penn and teller <laughs> so yeah <laughs> which is probably the weirdest yeah. biggest mistake of halloween horror nights orlando's history so yeah. i don't know what to make of that one well that that three boob zombie stripper she definitely was in your face in one scene <laughs> <laughs> so you know did you tip um, her I didn't, but I was distracted by the fact that my, my <laughs> wife was pulling me and she was saying, look, look over here. And I'm going, no, no, I'm looking over here. And she's going, no, 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 look over here. And I, she's going, what? There's two actors playing Penn and Teller. So I look and she goes, oh, no, wait, that is Penn and Teller. <laughs> well, you actually were there one of the days? Yeah, it was literally Penn and Teller. So that's the only thing that would make that house worth it for me because I was so excited for it. And it was such a, that was a 3D house, right? It was, yeah. I Are they... Yeah. Are they not doing 3D anymore? Do you think? Is it maybe maybe it's time has come because it's not really 3D? It's just prism glasses. Yeah, I mean 3D. Yeah, I, I think it's more aggravation than it's worth. Really, 3D and and they never ever become top of the polls for guests anyway. Everyone seems to sort of moan about them. So I I, I can't see them. You know, I mean it back other sort of other than a neat free souvenir, I really see no purpose. It's it's not like it makes the color on the wall stand out, but it also makes the theming just look we painted neon colors on the wall and it yeah. doesn't really do anything for me. Yeah, I know. I know the legal side of things. They don't like them too much. They don't like anything that sort of obscures the guests view oh, too yeah. much. It's very disorienting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there was one years ago, I think it was in uh, 2007, I think it was with Jack and he, his house was 3D that year. Mm -hmm. And I distinctively remember um, the, the night tunnel. I was there. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it was it, the tunnel always turns up. I think it might have been in there, but I remember someone in front of me uh, tripping up and really hurting themselves. So, you know, I can see why they may think mm, perhaps not. You know, uh, another announcement was for Hollywood only, uh, and I almost forgot to write it down, but it was Holidays in Hell, which was a scare zone last year. Yeah, and this year they're doing a whole house on it. Does anyone else want to read? Ian, would you like to read it? Oh, oh, right. I don't know. It has a Z on the end to be, I don't know, edgy. Um, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> the maze is set to include scenes featuring a tortured tunnel of love inhabited by a crazed Cupid on a quest for hearts to break or take. An unhinged Uncle Sam will create a sinister July 4th calibration. <laughs> Treacherous turkeys and a sick Santa will adorn Christmas trees with human body parts with many other milestones, killer holidays. Guests will eventually exit the maze into a creepy Christmas themed scare zone titled Christmas in Hell. Mm. Makes me think of a typo negative song. Well, you're right to point out with the Z because uh, last year when I finished writing the um, unofficial guide to uh, Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood, every darn scare zone going back for the last 10 years has got a Z at the end. So I don't know why they, uh, <laughs> they go for that. I really don't. It's pretty 1990s in my opinion, but hey, whatever. Maybe they can trademark it that way. Maybe, maybe. I mean, the scare zones in Hollywood, the problem is, is Hollywood is so cramped anyway. Yeah. Um, the the scare zones, are. I wouldn't say they're non-existent, but they don't really work. They really don't. Orlando has got so much more space uh, um, and room to put, you know, lovely props and set pieces and things. Whereas they just don't have that luxury there. So you kind of feel that it's, it'll just be scare actors mingling amongst the crowds. Um, and they really are generally lost on people. You know, people what, um, say, oh, where's this scare zone? You know, well, well there. But it's like, well, where? You know. <laughs> You're in it. <laughs> You're so, in it. <laughs> um, what do you think, speaking of scare zones, uh, not to jump ahead, but what do you think of what's happening lately uh, in Orlando, at least, where like uh, 
two out of the whatever five scare zones are kind of like photo opportunities now. We live in like a selfie era. So the one in front of Shrek and the one over in Hollywood tends to just be like, come over here and get a photo with me. It's not really a scare zone. Um, yeah. Is it, it, do you think this is weird or just the times we live in now? Uh, I'll tell you what it was. I can tell you the year. It was 2009. And that was the first year where they allowed scare actors to pose for photos. Hmm. Prior to that, they always declined or just ran off or ignored them. Right, right. Acted like a scary character. Yeah, they, they stayed in character. And, you, I mean, you wouldn't ask Frankenstein for a selfie. You'd run from him. You know what I mean? Sorry, <laughs> Frankenstein's monster. Sorry, I can't break the uh, mistake that Universal avoided earlier. Unless it's um, 1990 and you're at Universal Studios Florida. Then he would pose for you. Well, exactly. They didn't during have the, the walk-around day, character. Yes, during they the They did, day. yeah. They did. Um, I mean, I, I remember in 2009, there was a, a scare actor, a really good guy, and he was um, one of the senior members of uh, Orlando City's uh, fire department. And he was, a, you know, he was a fireman during the day, saving lives and things. And he was a very heroic chap. I mean, he's probably still doing it. And he, was, he loved Halloween Horror Nights, and he was a scare actor. And I remember, I mean, he was quite a you know, big guy, and they cast him as um, Norman Bates, so rather than have him just as Norman Bates in his regular gear, they had him as Norman Bates dressed as mother. Okay. So I, I knew this guy. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I know, full dress, wig, everything. So I knew this guy, uh, you know, personally. And I said to him, oh, you know, I saw him in the park. And I said, oh, can I post for a picture? And he, and, he, and he did. And he told me later that actually they are allowed now. That was the first year. But I had to get a picture with this quite, you know, tall you know, warrior-like fire brigade man that they have made wear this <laughs> bloody dress, you know. <laughs> and, um, well, it, you know, it makes sense in this day and age. It's good free in marketing to get on social media and, you know, so you might as well pose. But it, it's kind of taken away from the theming of those scare zones because now it's, especially Hollywood, they just have yeah. little displays and you just kind of pose with each one. Although I do like that they usually bring back the old icons for their own little display in Hollywood. That's kind of a cool ongoing thing now. Well, they, they do an event in the UK called Secret Cinema where they literally rebuild um, sets and have actors playing the characters from films in them. That This year they're doing Casino Royale. In the past they've Ooh. done Dirty Dancing, they've done um, Star Wars. Uh, I think it was... Um, uh, episode five what's it called um empire strikes back empire, empire strikes back. back and they've done it they did it like every year in incredibly good detail and things but they ban your camera your phone your, oh your so, so when there's you no get there yeah it's all in a bag and it's sealed away and you can't take any photos or do anything and they've often said oh we don't get enough press or, or publicity well you know you're not allowing anybody to post anything on social media you know, I want a photo of me standing next to the DB5 with a guy that looks like Daniel Craig. You know, I want that on Twitter. <laughs> of course. But I don't get it. <laughs> because of social media, I want to see that kids play redoing Alien, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I so... I want to see that. <laughs> we didn't actually talk about Holidays in Hell, but... Uh... We'll There's move. not much to talk about. In all yeah. fairness, they're just yeah. Uh, Stranger Things 2. That was the first house announced for this year, right? Uh, yes, I think, I think same so. as last year. And oh yeah, and of course this is bringing in a whole new demographic. Like the 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 event was already packed, but now it's like double packed mm -hmm. because it's bringing in people. It's bringing in the stroller crowd. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you saw Chucky making fun of that guy. And it's like, you're a bad father. Put your kid to bed. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it was pretty good stuff. Um, but Stranger Things 2 is returning. And that's got me really excited. That's one of the main reasons I even got tickets already for this year. So I'm a sucker for it. I love the show. Um, and this year they're going to have not only Stranger Things Season 2, but also Stranger Things Season 3, which starts in July. Uh, whereas the last one was just Season 1. Um, yeah, it may only be reduced to sort of the, a final couple of scenes at the end, though. That's what I was thinking. It's like maybe yeah. the Star Court Mall is reserved for the end, and it's kind of like a tease almost yeah. for for the third season. Um, because they, they will have the demo dogs, which is in the second season. They'll have Chief Hopper's cabin and the, the Star Court Mall are really the only things that they like actually verified will be in this uh, house. And the Star Court Mall is, of course, not going to be in season three, which we haven't seen yet. 
Is there going to be differences between Orlando and Hollywood for this one? Or do we not know? Because they, they didn't have the kids in Hollywood, did they? Um, they had like mannequin kids, unless yeah. that photo was wrong. They did have, yeah, they, they did have some actors playing kids, but they did have many more mannequins. Because I don't um, think I saw any mannequins in Orlando when I went through. It was all actors, and they looked really good. Like, they looked just like the kids. It was, like, well, they, astonishing. They, they did do. I mean, crikey, that, um, what's the, the, the older guy, the teenager with the, with the hair, you know? Um, Steve. Steve. My God, the guy that was playing him was his, was absolute, his double, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. They all, they, they, I, I went on Stranger Things Day. I didn't actually get to the Halloween Horror Nights, but I was lucky enough to get on, to get in through the house on Stranger Things Day when they opened it during the day. Oh, wow. And it really sold me on, on getting tickets for next year because of how good that house was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, also in Hollywood, what they did do, because they did have a lot of mannequins, I don't quite know why, but um, <laughs> they did do a really good scare where there was, uh, it was in the classroom and there was a very obvious 11 uh, mannequin and she mm-hmm. was had her hand out and she was projecting her forces against this um uh, demogorgon demogorgon and he was moving in like a robotic way to make it look like he was also a mannequin or animatronic if you like but he wasn't he was an actor and in every sort of like fifth person this guy would like jump out at people it was a really good scare oh so they that's actually, awesome they actually used the mannequin to their advantage if you like that's see that's clever that's cool. okay i like that i'm wondering i'm wondering if they're going to be able to do the mind flare because that would be really cool. That's a pretty large thing. Mm. Walking into the house, they had a projection effect, like the opening credit sequence where like uh, the music's playing and they just have a projection of the the main title card, like for Stranger Things getting bigger and bigger um, above the door. So Mm. I'm thinking a projection of the giant um, that's what you're talking about is the giant like a uh, spidery thing over the yeah, town, the mind, right? Yes. The mind if they flare. did yep. a projection over a scene, I think it would look pretty believable, like almost like a forced perspective matte painting type thing where you're seeing something in the foreground and then the background, they have a projection on the ceiling. Yeah. Or on They've the done high wall. Before. Yeah. I think it um, could be pretty believable because it's mostly just a smoke monster. Yeah, uh, so it doesn't have have to have that much defined detail, but a projection in the dark could look pretty creepy, especially if they do the flashing light effect with the falling embers. That that looked oh, pretty believable yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, forgot about that. So yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be in a sound stage as well. So they've got you know the full you know use of one of those with all of the technical abilities that they they have. So you know, I mean, it should be another really good house. Yeah, even if yeah. they just redid the first one, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the mind flare would be a much more interesting thing than just a house after house of demo dogs. Well, if they use honest. the puppet technology from American Werewolf in London. Yeah, I'm not uh, saying they're the going to look dogs, bad. That, that stuff scared the crap out of me. Yeah, I'm so, not saying they're going to look bad. I just don't want to see like a rinse and repeat every room kind of thing. Well, you, know? you didn't like season two, did you, Ian? It was okay. I liked it, but I'll be honest. I, I will watch it anytime because I like Dustin so much, so. I think if I think we walk fun. through the tunnels too, if we actually walk through the tunnel, like that would be scary. Just being enclosed in the actual underground tunnel. Um, and they're like, maybe they'll have a wrapper for a three musketeers bar on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something as well. Uh, last year, the Orlando version of this house was absolutely spot on. And it actually felt like you were literally walking through the TV show. Whereas Hollywood's one did not make you feel like that. It sort of felt like a, you know, sort of a, a lesser uh, portrayal of those sort of sets. Whereas the ones from uh, Orlando, it kind of felt like you were walking through the sets after they'd gone home one day, you know? Yeah. Well, like the school, especially, um, except for the see-through wall, um, the, yeah. the school set, the, the, the hallways looked really good. Um, seeing the, uh, uh, the buyer's uh, little fort. And then later on, when you're in the upside down, you see it again, I think. So like that was a really cool idea where like here you're in the woods and here's the fort and then later on you're in the upside down and you see it again and it's all disheveled and there's stuff falling from the sky. Um, mm. But yeah, the, like the portal too, the 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 actual portal that they made looked really impressive. Like that oh, was yeah. probably the, one of the best scenes just because like this looks like a recreated science lab and everything. Yeah, yeah. My, my only other thought is is Sean is Sean Aston gonna die in the in the walkthrough somewhere? Hey, Puts hey. dog's killing somebody. Hey, let's pretend that didn't happen. Also, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Come on. Who hasn't watched it by now? I, I don't know, but they just got spoiled. 
<laughs> yeah, whatever. It's Who like didn't see that he was gonna die. It's like super thundering over here right now. So um, one, I might lose internet. Two, it's very fitting for Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so those so, are the only announced houses, yes. unless I missed one. Okay, good. So now we're going to move on to uh, speculation, rumors, things that people keep talking about, uh, and things that we think are a given. So uh, I guess we could start with the thing I think is a given is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. Yes. So excited. Uh, because that. that was a very successful scare zone. I mean, that was people were staying as late as they could after the event closed just to keep partying with the clowns. That's how popular this was. That's good. Yeah. Well, I, I interviewed awesome. someone last year who's very, very, very close to the uh, IP holder for this brand, and they told me that it was locked in 100%. Yeah, see, that's what I want to hear. That's pretty awesome. Exactly. That's very awesome. It's crazy that this super low budget film uh, went on to be such a cult classic all these years later. It's so good. It's such a fun movie, though. It, sh- it deserves it, in my opinion. There's so much iconography, like uh, people in the uh, cotton candy pods, uh, a circus tent uh, spaceship. Like, this is some good stuff. <laughs> Giant yeah. scary clown. Well, that yeah. too. I've heard that it's actually going to go into Shrek. Um and the Shrek 2 theater actually closed down this week. Um, oh, okay. So they so are literally, starting... as we speak, building it now. I think that's a good spot for it, too. Uh, they usually put the like some of the more colorful ones in there or the the circusy ones in there. And I think it, it's a it's a weird fit to squeeze in that theater, but I think that'll that'll actually work for work to its advantage. Yeah, sadly, um, the house that usually goes in there usually has the, the, the least amount of stuff saved from it. So because it, they have to get that second theater open again for the, you know, the holiday oh. crowds that are coming in, they literally go in overnight and completely gut the place. It's a quick demo. Yeah, and then the, all of the Shrek stuff goes back really quickly because if, if you ever go through that house, most of the Shrek stuff is still in there. Yeah, you just have to know where to look for it. Like a lot of the animatronics and things, they're still there. The, the pre-show stuff, yeah, yeah, all the pre-show stuff. Um, yeah, it's so which is a lot why it doesn't get saved. Which is why it works for for this demo, like this actual house. Because if you accidentally see Pinocchio hiding in the background, it's it totally fits with Killer Clowns. Yeah. <laughs> it totally fits. <laughs> That's true. Oh man, <laughs> that's usually why there's like um, one of the years I went, they had the like. Uh, um, was it an Alice in Wonderland thing? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah like that kind of that. stuff, that kind of fantasy stuff works in there because if you accidentally see any of the theming for a Shrek, it, it's a fantasy type theming. Also, that building is haunted. Did you know this? Um, is it Alfred Hitchcock? I hope. <laughs> Apparently, Alfred Hitchcock haunts that building. Good. Yeah, that's that's how it should be because I miss that show uh, so much. Yeah, yeah. Apparently. Um... A lot of the people that work Shrek, when they shut everything down at the, at the end of the day, they have to say good night to Alfred. It's like See, a tradition good. now. Now, I wonder, was it haunted when it was Alfred Hitchcock Presents? Because I worked there when it was Alfred Did Hitchcock you? Presents, and I do not remember it being haunted then. So I wonder if it's only when Shrek took over that things got a little creepy Probably. around there. Probably. The, the, the folklore, <laughs> the urban legend goes that he was so pissed off because they uh. had... Uh, close his attraction uh yeah you know i don't blame him yeah i'm right i'm with him haunt away <laughs> okay chris what are some other rumored houses that what's another one that you think is maybe a lock or pretty good uh well idea? Uh, an interesting one i don't know much about to be honest with you the ones we know least about really are the ones that are the original houses i think right. we can pretty much say that we don't know much about those um, and, a, and a really nice article that um, my staff writer, Dan, at hhnunofficial.com posted today was uh, a tip-off that we had had um, where uh, somebody very close to the Universal Publicity Department in London um, said that a few years ago, a number of Universal um, staff came over to talk about the Halloween Horror Nights that was that year. And uh, when they'd finished, they asked to have a tour set up of Highgate Cemetery in London. Um, which is you know, a very long distance away from where they were presenting. I mean, it's well out of central London. Um, so a bit weird. Okay, so they, they put it on and they went there. And then they had, uh, and, and they show it in the article, that some of the people that were on the tour, um, Michaelo, for example, posted videos and photos of their time in Highgate Cemetery. 
Now this year, apparently, there is a graveyard cemetery house that is um, being speculated about. An original house. An original house, yeah. Um, And why Highgate Cemetery in London, if you don't know, um, got so famous, particularly over here, was because it had, in the 60s and 70s, a heck ton of uh, reportings to the police of a vampire that was living in the cemetery. Oh, oh and there was yeah, I remember this story. An actual uh, a guy that was a vampire hunter who apparently chased this vampire down and killed him with a stake to his heart. And I don't know the full story. I believe he then got done for, you know, opening graves and things. Um, but there, there's so much urban legend to do with this particular cemetery. So if they've used this, and they do do trips away to places for inspiration. I remember 2014, I think it was, maybe 2015, they did a big trip to New Orleans. And then a few years later, we got Dead Waters. Mm-hmm. So it does it does happen. They are doing these trips for inspiration purposes. So it just makes me wonder if, and this is what Dan says in the article, is this the inspiration for this graveyard house that is rumoured this year? I, I hope so. Now I'm really intrigued by that. That actually sounds really interesting. Yeah. So I don't know, and we don't know. It's just a tip-off that we had, and we just you know present it to people, and they can make their own mind up. And nope, oh, that's it. You said it online. It's it's all sealed. It's... Yeah, exactly. Oh, if it's on this podcast, <laughs> it will be real. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this podcast is magical. Yeah, but it's usually the most obscure thing we talk about that ends up coming true. Like one, we'll say an off, like a random sentence, and then that will come true, but not the big thing we talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it actually um, sounds yeah. good. I remember that story like a little bit. Uh, I hope that's the inspiration. That'd be cool. I remember a few years ago, um, I posted a, a picture of Wednesday Adams, and I just posted Happy Wednesday. And then I had people going, oh, Adams Family House confirmed. Adams Family <laughs> House has been confirmed. <laughs> and we've had similar happen in our short lifespan here on the podcast, at least. Well, Universal did that with like Stranger Things, and it they ended did. up being real. It's like. True. I, it was like, I'm craving waffles, and it was an upside-down universal uh, globe or something. That's and right. then it turned out to actually – and it was nearly a year in advance. So, it was, yeah. You know, sometimes you, you, you can't read into it, and sometimes it actually is a hint. That's true. I mean, the um, John Murdy uh, in Hollywood, he's picked up on this uh, a few years ago. So now he – tweets on occasion fake clues now yeah yeah which is awesome yeah so, <laughs> so you can't 100 percent believe exactly what they're saying now so yep okay i'm just gonna jump right to the big one why does everyone think ghostbusters is getting a house um well i can't well what well, i tell you what i say i'll tell you what i tell you what i was i was talking about this earlier so i'm talking in riddles now we did an article on hhn unofficial about why Ghostbusters would be a good idea. That's all. Mm-hmm. And we put the business case for it. And I won't say who, but somebody told me to take it down straight away. Oh. So it was oh. on our site for about an hour. Ooh. <laughs> That's interesting. So, and I, I, you know, I said why. And um, this person said to me, well, it's, um, you know, it might well happen one day. And, um, we wouldn't want to be spoiling any potential conversations that two parties may or may not be having to secure this IP. I was like, oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. May or may not. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. But I would I would say to you now, was it Universal or was it um, just the Stranger Things handle? Was posting videos of the, the guys in the Ghostbusters outfit for their Halloween. Um, I think it was just Stranger Things because they did yeah. that in the season two. That's how the kids dressed up. Yeah. So you talk about, you know, um, synergy. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, well, yeah. yeah I didn't even think about that. Season two, they're dressed as Ghostbusters. And there's yeah. another Imagine if you had a Ghostbusters house right next door to a Ghostbusters house. Yeah. And there's a Ghostbusters movie in the works, too, with the original guys. Well, then we can get a Ghostbusters 2 house next year based on the new movie Ghost- or, or based on Ghostbusters three. 2. I'd be fine That'd with be, that. Yeah, I was going to say. In the article, uh, we talk about the business case, as I said, and I was quite surprised when I was asked to take it down. Um, but the, the interesting thing was that the thing I, that we say in the article is that if you if you now generally just have a look around, walk through your Target or Walmart, etc., look at how much Ghostbusters stuff there is everywhere. 
I mean, and it's quite it's discreet. I mean, in, in, in the UK, for example, at the moment, Ghostbusters is advertising cable TV. It's advertising um, a brand of car insurance. It's also advertising a, uh, a bank to get mortgages from, um, as well as, you know, Funko Pops and all of the other merchandise and things that, ha- that, that, that are about. So they are a good partner. They like to get their brand out there um dan Aykroyd is a great businessman you know he, he, and he will get that brand everywhere if it fits what they want to do so i'm quite surprised that there would be some negotiation i would imagine it would be can we do a ghostbusters house? oh yes you can straight <laughs> away do you know what i mean well i will say the new um the, the old terminator 2 exit shop that also is the horror makeup exit shop at universal studios florida is selling lots of monsters merchandise right now, but it's also selling other things, including Ghostbusters merchandise. Yeah, um, and they have a Vigo painting up there that's signed by Sigourney no Weaver. No way! Have you not seen my Twitter? I've been taking pictures of Vigo every week I go there. Is Vigo? Oh, you, I need you are like Vigo. flies buzzing around his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, don't don't forget that Ghostbusters was an opening day attraction that ran yeah, for a number I'll of years. Never forget, never. But exactly, forget. you know. And then Ghostbusters has, has appeared as a show at uh, Halloween Horror Nights many times before. Oh, at Halloween Horror Nights, really? At Halloween Horror Nights in the early days. I mean, even like wow. when you go back to Robosaurus, they were in one of the shows there with them. You know, and they've they've always sold the merch, not to a massive degree, but the merch seems to have always been there. So I think that they've had a quite a long relationship with Sony with this mm-hmm. property. So I think that if they wanted to do something, I can't see why Sony would say no. I, and I think it would be a really a great showcase for special effects. I think that a house based on Ghostbusters would allow them to do so many different styles of of scares. So and like not only that, it's such a belo- beloved property. Um, mm. It might bring in more of the stroller crowd, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, is we've um, said this directly to Universal a few times that we were sort of concerned that it was getting a little bit, you know, kid friendly, etc. And they've always said um, going forward that if we do have anything that is inverted commas slightly kid friendly, we say Ghostbusters or Stranger Things, then it will be balanced out with far scarier houses, you know, elsewhere. I- I like that line of thinking. That's a it's a great way to put it. And yeah, you know, so graveyard it, thing, and um, maybe exactly. some of the other originals. They can really go all out, and they can do what the hell they like with the with the originals. Yeah, and okay, uh, another one that I was hoping was a true rumor that uh, a few people told me. There are there's also merchandise in that store for Gremlins. There are Mogwais all over Universal Studios Florida right now. Yeah. Uh, but I'm doing the math and I'm like I don't think there's enough IP houses to have all of these and one of them's got to go. So is this just another recurring rumor that everyone hopes is true? I think or- it is. I mean, okay. you know, Warners have just done uh their Halloween event in Burbank um and yeah. they didn't feature the Gremlins at all. Um, and this year they're not doing their event. Um, I think they've possibly worked out that licensing their properties to people like Universal, they can make more money than doing it themselves. Uh, does um, it help that yeah. Spielberg is an executive producer on that film? It would definitely help, yeah. It would. Maybe maybe they're just putting the feelers out and they're going to actually do it now that Warner Brothers has decided it's not worth their time to do their own. I think the, the other problem as well is because it's become such a well-oiled machine. I mean, for example, if you look over the last 10 years, they've sort of moved away from makeup and, and gone more with, say, masks mm-hmm. uh, because they're quicker and easier to put on and you don't need a huge makeup team. There's been a lot of streamlining of things because the event has got so big. I mean, we're talking 10 houses and umpteen scare zones and shows. It's a hell of a lot to put on every year and to have everything completely different every year. So I, I don't know how much they could do with a Gremlins house in terms of how many puppets would have to be made, how they would be deployed, how they would make it scary. I think yeah, there's a lot I of mean, question marks on that one. Yeah. To make it, yeah, it's it's not like the big giant um, werewolf puppets or or the Demogorgon will probably be puppets or even, I mean, the demo dogs. I think Gremlins are smaller, so mm. it would be more like uh, things on sticks with holes in the wall. Like, I don't know how yeah. you really you really do it. Uh, unless you have people running around with Gremlins all over them screaming. <laughs> or people shooting like they did in uh, at some of the houses before where like the, the, the actors are just actual good guys trying to help and they're there shooting and stuff. Well, so, they, um, they, 
they also kind of did cause some havoc where you didn't actually see them all the time. Like you saw them in the movie doing it, but like the woman getting launched out of her roof on her chair and stuff, like she just sat in her chair and went. Like would they don't always a, have to be in the room when something. Would there be a happening. movie theater playing Seven uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Of in the back? course, <laughs> and then they'd all be sitting in their chairs watching. But going back to the Chiodo Brothers again, you know, with Killer Clowns, one of their other big franchises that they they deal with is uh, obviously uh, Critters. Um, you know what? They actually did the stop motion for Gremlins too. Now that you mention it, did they? Yeah, the, uh, the Chiodo yeah. Brothers. Yeah, that's some creepy stop motion stuff. The flying bat one, the bat gremlin, that was them. That was them. So, I believe you know, so. Critters has got a new series at the moment, um, I believe, on um, one of the pay-per-view subscription services online. Um, and I know they're keen to push that. And there was kind of a nod to that last year in um, uh, the cinema house. Yeah. Dabbled with that. And it does make you wonder if that's some kind of, you know, tester for something that could I, be Gremlins. I don't want the Gremlins knockoff. I want Gremlins. <laughs> yeah, but no. – well, I think Critters is going to be on Shutter. That's actually somewhere they could start digging to is Shutter. That's a pretty cool service. I, yeah, I, you're making that up. I have no idea what you're saying. Shutter. It's a. Uh, no. It's like Netflix for only horror movies, right? Yeah, right. that's where Critters is at the moment. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's just for there's horror. Too many movies. streaming services. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, but Shutter matters because it's all scary stuff. They actually have some pretty good content on there, actually. So it'd be I'll pretty have to cool. Check it out. They they should mind that. Well, they have a good deal going with Netflix. I wouldn't be surprised to see more Netflix houses besides Stranger Things in coming years. Like House on Haunted Hill. Um, okay, House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh huh. <laughs> that, uh-huh. There it is. Verified. We got verification. He said, "Uh huh." You heard well, it. Well, the thing is, it surprises me because there was problems with this. Because do you know the backstory to this movie? Uh, I this is the Rob Zombie directed film, yeah. right? It it was a uh, house at Halloween Horror Nights first before anything. Oh, okay. And then it wait, got no, first a, before it was a movie. It was a house before it was a movie. I did not know that. Yep, it's one of the very very few um, uh, examples of that where something has left Halloween Horror Nights to go to the cinema, whereas it's usually the other way around. So it was a house. It was built on the back lot by Rob Zombie for Halloween Horror Nights, um, whatever year it was. And is this like a hobby in between music? This is very weird. Well, Rob Zombie um, has has been linked. To, well, Rob Zombie basically had an office at Halloween at um, Universal Hollywood's back lot. They they rent out loads of offices there, and he had one which where he did a lot of his producing for his shows and his music, etc. Um, okay. And apparently, the story goes that John Murdy basically bumped into him one day, and he said, oh, "I'm a big fan of your event. I've been going since I was a kid." Blah blah blah. So then he invited him in to do a house, and I think he did you know, quite a few houses for Hollywood in the end. Um, but one of them was this house. Um, and it was a Halloween Horror Nights house. And then they started to use it uh, to make this film. Um, and then, very bizarrely, the Universal executives saw the film and they went, no, no, this this is too graphic. It's too gory. Right. We can't release this under Universal's banner whatsoever. I mean, it's literally the only thing I've ever heard about it is it's extremely gory. I've never yeah. actually seen it, no. but I know who directed it and I know it's gory. So then he had this horrible task, apparently, of having to go around all the studios um, to try and find somebody to distribute it for him. Uh, and I forget who eventually did do it, but you know, one would assume that would have left a sour taste in your mouth that you'd done all these houses for Halloween Horror Nights. You'd made this film for Universal on their back lot, on the cheap, using a, you know using sets and props from a haunted house that they've just had. So they've, you saved them a lot of money in theory. Um, and then they turn around and go, sorry, we're not releasing it. So I was surprised as you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, now that I can know the backstory, that is slightly unusual. But if they're trying to offset you know, some of the more family friendly fare. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe the, the most gory film ever is the right thing to do. Well, yeah, there you go. I mean, that would answer that really, because apparently, you know, it is, I have not personally seen it, um, but it is, it's good. It, okay. For gore anyway. It's good I, for I gore anyway. It, yeah. So if <laughs> they, re- if they reproduce that in a house, then that will balance it out. So the thing is, is that there's sequels to it, but, um, like there's a new one coming, but it's more like uh, a sequel in the sense of the characters than the actual story of from the movie. 
And there's a new one coming out, and some of those characters are like Captain Spaulding, and he works in a gas station to sell his chicken and stuff like that. So, I mean, overall, just if you see the movie, the aesthetics of the movie would lend itself to a house, I would, I think, in my opinion. I mean, there's underground parts. You're in an old, old gas station like out in the middle of nowhere with a weird clown that has a really filthy mouth and is awesome selling chicken and gasoline. So, no, wait, I mean, now hold on. Um, there are code names. Every year, there's like a leaked list of code names. Although in yep. recent years, I think they've been putting out fake code names just to mess with us. Yep. But one of the code names is, is chicken. chicken. Yep. Yeah. So, if you look up I mean, Captain Spaulding, you'll see all kinds of like chick, like fried chicken and gasoline stuff. And the guy that plays Captain Spaulding is kind of like a cult horror guy, Sid ha- uh, Sid Haig. I like so how you said the, the the film would lend itself to a haunted house when you actually imagine it was actually filmed in a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, there's underground parts too. Like when they find like Dr. Satan and stuff like that, it's, it's underground. If I remember right, I haven't watched it in a while, but there are icons in the movies too. Like Bill Mosley's in the movie Mm -hmm. and he continues with the rest of the movies after. So it would not seem outside the realm of universal's interest to have a house based on the movie or any of the movies after, especially with a new one coming out soon. Yeah. So it has a a big cult following, I assume. And I didn't even realize there were sequels. Yeah, well, most of his movies have cult followings. Like The Devil's Rejects is the sequel, but it's just the same family, like the evil family. Mm-hmm. It's not like a direct sequel. Gotcha, but, gotcha. So there's a there's a Devil's a Rejects two coming. That are yeah. The, the thing as well is, as an event, they've taken so many risks over the years, and they've always pulled off because they do a very good job. I mean, Killer Clowns, for example, you mentioned that earlier. That's a big risk to them. Who remembers that from the eighties? But actually. It was so well received because it was so well done that I mean, it allows them to take risks with properties like this. Yeah, I thought it was a weird one. It kind of came out of nowhere. But now knowing the back history of it, it's actually now I really hope it's going to happen because like it deserves it'd be a full circle. It'd be a, a complete circle of like house movie house. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Um, another original house that everyone's talking about is the the Swamp Yeti. Uh-huh. Um which I guess was one of the elements of last year's like uh, cinema house. And yeah. I guess it was the popular, the most popular segment of it. So everyone believes that's going to get its own house this year. Well, the prior to um, Mike Aiello being in charge of the event, the, the, the previous show director, um, or no, no, pardon me, I think Mike's above that now, but whoever the show director was there, um, uh, then, there was a chap that I interviewed. It was, uh, I don't know, 2009, something like that. And I said to him, what's the house that you've never made that you've always wanted to make, the original, that would be so scary? And he said to me, he looked at me in the face and he said, I've always wanted to make a Bigfoot house. Um, hmm. And I said, well, why not? If it's so scary, I mean, it's not like someone owns the IP to Bigfoot. Um, and he said, I would be too terrified to walk through it. That's why I cannot make a Bigfoot house. And now he's obviously gone. I, he was working for Disney last time I checked. But so, you know, you've got different people involved now. And that was so well received last year as a small portion within that house, as you said, mm-hmm. that making it into a, into a larger house, I think would be a really cool idea. And the, the Swamp Yeti is like the South's version of the, the Sasquatch, essentially. Yeah, because there there is actually a um, it's called the stink ape or something, isn't it? There is actually oh, yeah. a legend. Oh yeah, yeah, stink ape. Yes, yeah. I thought it was there a is a skunk ape. Skunk ape. Skunk ape. Yeah, sorry, that's it. Skunk ape. Because it stinks so bad, and, and then that's how you know it's around you. Yeah, you know, and that it's that bad. comes from Florida, doesn't it? Apparently. Yeah. yeah no, it's the Everglades. That's yeah, yeah. That's our that's our that's uh, your one, isn't Sasquatch. it? I like how everyone has to have their own. <laughs> what do you make of the rumor of it being Appalachian, the Appalachian Yeti? Like, are they changing it from swamp to a, a different setting? I don't know. I mean, reasons or is this well, just a, someone's guess out there? I think, I think it's an, probably I th- a guess, but I don't know. I think the Appalachian Yeti could be a little scarier than just walking through thick brush, like seeing like old abandoned like cabins and stuff out in the woods or something like that. Yeah, I just wonder if maybe swamp uh, because they did New Orleans house a couple of years ago already. Maybe they're trying to branch out and do something a little different. Yeah, that could be too. What was the what was the one with the cannibals? Oh, um, Roanoke. Yes, Roanoke. Yes. Can you imagine if like Appalachian Yeti is like a tie in to Roanoke, and at the end there's the the cannibal people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because um, it was a, a deserted settlement, wasn't it, or something? 
That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 It was a ori- Roanoke was an original settlement, and then when they came, some they left and they came back, and everybody was gone. gone. It's a mystery. Oh, well, it's because they ate each other. Mystery solved. But the thing yeah. is, you know, what Universal you has got a good track record with urban legends. Because these are all just legends that you know are in the history yeah. books. You know, I mean, like the Dust Bowl, which was the um, Scarecrow House from a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yep. yeah. Um, you know, so that, I mean, even as far back as Bloody Mary, I mean, the queen of the urban mm-hmm. legends, if you like. You know, so they've all they've always dabbled in this area. I like too when they combine their different uh, original stories, when they like take the setting of one. Um, and then mix in the monster of another, like the, um, I'm so bad with the names, but what was the insane asylum? Oh, uh, psycho uh, therapy. The, um, did they use that and have like multiple versions of it with different, uh, like, uh, and then they mix it with something else the last time they did. It, I can't remember. And they did it as a scare zone too. They have done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. The, the, the way that they'll take their original ideas and then like uh, with the nightingales and then merge them into a new story or put them in a different environment. I, I love the way that they do that. And it kind of, it makes it a special treat for people that go year after year uh, because not only is it a brand new house, but it's also got a little flavor of a previous house and there's like their own lore within the Halloween Horror Nights stories. I mean, they literally do that just for us fans they, they yeah. i mean nine out of ten people going through the gate will have no clue about any of that at all um and i know that they've had arguments in the past where higher ups have gone why are you spending all this money doing tying all these things together and you know and it is just for the fans it is literally just for the fans <clears throat> right stranger things is going to bring in or ghostbusters is going to bring in all the new blood but you need something if you're going to do original houses like this and maybe it helps them with creativity to like spark an idea like what if we took this and merged it with this like they've got they, it sounds like they're having fun coming yeah. up with these ideas and i love that and you can feel it when you go through the houses i think run has had three houses now hasn't it yeah i think so yeah uh and that's a very interesting idea like the apocalyptic future game show <laughs> Yeah, uh, the last one I did, I think, was the like international versions. They had different countries uh, playing in the show now. Yeah, they, they. If you go through it, there's a lot of different sort of brands, if you like, that they've set up, sort of franchises. So they, they've got a lot that they can bring back that they've done in the past. I mean, even like the Dead Waters, the Voodoo Queen. She was just a character in a scare zone a few years prior. You know? Right, that's right. Uh, um, which was uh, who her got her show cut after a couple of weeks. Yeah, and she was pulled out <laughs> of it. <laughs> and then she ended up getting her own house next year. So yeah, there's two yeah. more on here, right? Are the originals that we haven't gotten to? Yeah. Well, if you look at the speculation map from, uh, I'm going to shout out here from HH Nightmares on Twitter, uh, there is something called Tooth Fairy and mm. Depth of Fear. Mm. Yeah, Tooth Fairy. Uh, they already did Tooth Fairy, though, didn't they? Something like that with all the little fairies is it, drilling. Is people. that the movie starring The Rock? I, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that, that is so horrible. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. um, I know nothing about these two, really. Um, I do it, like the idea of an underwater house. I like the concept of that. That's what Depths of Fear says, parentheses, underwater house. So whatever that is, I like that concept. The Meg? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, like deep down, like the anglerfish, but like it's a creature that's half human would be pretty cool. I'm you just know, throwing Holly- ideas out there. Hollywood did a very good uh, underwater house once with uh, the, um, uh, uh, what's their water show called? Um, water World, isn't it? Water- water yeah, World. Water World. Yeah, they did a, a house in in that building. So they had people dressed as like, um, you know, the gill man behind tanks and things. So that was quite interesting. Oh, that, that is interesting. Yeah. Mm. So we have no idea where these ideas are coming from, but they're they're interesting at least. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I've heard literally nothing about those two. How about any scare zones? Have you heard anything about scare zones? There's a rumor going around about Hellraiser. I mean, uh, HHN unofficial has been sort of throwing that rumor around for the last at least the last four years now. I um, threw that to um, to our Facebook group. Uh, theme park stop search groups on Facebook for theme park stop. We were talking about what houses we'd like to see. And I put Hellraiser in there. And a lot of the comments were Hellraiser is so scary that they wouldn't walk through the scare zone. I was like, I, I guess I never really thought about it, but that is, they are some scary characters. It's also got um, some overtones to it. It would be a very adult house for people that have never <laughs> seen Hellraiser. 
<laughs> it's like the bondage. Just house. throwing that out. Yep. <laughs> Is that what you mean? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, there's a, especially like the hooks through the flesh, like that always creeped me out when I. I saw know somebody that did that for real. No, see, that's that's it's become a popular thing. I don't even know if it's scary anymore well, he, in the way that it originally was supposed to be scary. Well, he did it a couple decades ago, so but whatever. Anyway, uh, I think the house would be cool. I think I think as a house, it would be scary. I'm not sure how that would work as a scare. Well, the zone. scare zone. There's so many iconic characters, especially Pinhead, obviously. But there's a lot of iconic characters from the films that if they were just walking around, I'd be pretty terrified. I don't think walking around would scare me. I think if they had full on sets that looked like the movies, I think that would be horrifying. Well, Clive, um, it's Clive Barker, isn't it? The guy that um, yeah. created those. Um, he worked, I think it was two or three years in Hollywood and created his own houses um, out there, none of which had any of the characters from the Hellraiser franchise. Um, and I know for a fact that Universal have been sort of courting the IP holders uh, of this franchise for a very long time. Um, and it has been raised a few times, and I think the last time it was raised, um, the reply that they, they got was uh, the IP ownership rights are complicated, inverted commas, because I think there's been umpteen remakes, and I think uh, mm-hmm. perhaps people that get a remake then get perhaps some kind of say over the direction of things. I, I mean, I don't know. It's all in the, the contracts probably. So we know that they've been trying to do it for a very long time. We don't know the reason why it hasn't happened. But it, it could be a, a tester, like the clown right. from last year. Yeah. You know? And I think it would be successful. So if it, like, if it is a test and it does happen, I could see that definitely being a house later on. I think, yeah. I think even if they could get it as a tester and even if it becomes like anything they can do to get Clive Barker movies. Because, I mean, even if his plots aren't always great, some of, most of the imagery in his movies are, are, right. is amazing. Like yeah. Midnight Me Train, that'd be a cool thing. With you. Yeah, I mean, he should be on board because he's worked with them before, so he knows the quality that they do. I mean, this is the problem with people like Stephen King, is he just assumes that all haunted house attractions are trash. But, you know, at least Clive knows the good work that Universal does. It might come down to rights holders, like you said. Like, like they they built the Scream house a few years back, and... Uh, you could when they turned it into the purge. I think That's like right. you could clearly see Drew Barrymore hanging from a tree uh, from the opening of Scream, and they had to convert the whole thing and like just left behind some of the sets and the the house yeah. and stuff from from Scream. Um, and that probably was I just I can feel it in my mind like they thought they were doing a movie based like the Scream movie, and that was the year that the TV show was taking off. And they probably the rights holders were like, no, 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 we want you to make it based on the show that we're starting, and like. I can imagine the Halloween Horror Nights crew going, yeah, but no one knows about the show yet. <laughs> yeah. Like we, we know the movie, like the show's well, coming out the same month as the event. Apparently what happened there, uh, Fal Allison, I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, but he, he told me he had some dealings with this. He said that they were dealing with Dimension to build a house based on the original film. Right. And they had no problem whatsoever. And then because the TV show went into production and this was being done by another company, they felt, this other company, that their tv show would be um you know publicity for that would be pushed out the mm-hmm. way because of halloween horror nights making a uh a house based on the movie so they didn't want this you know they, they wanted some synergy they wanted them to retrofit right. it into the tv show i don't think universal was comfortable with that no um, and you know what like it wouldn't have been the same thing i think you know seeing a house based on the original film would get me excited to watch a new show that was coming out around yeah. the same time yeah although um they did for dust till dawn based on the TV show that no yeah. one knew or watched. So it was yeah. weird to finally get a From Dust Till Dawn house and it not be anything I remember, except for the name of the, well, they called it the Twister, <laughs> for the, the <laughs> name of the bar. Um, like, I'm going through this house and I'm like, I have no idea what any of this is. And I love I that movie. the show. <laughs> okay, one person saw the show. I'm yep, sorry. I saw it. it. It wasn't great, but it was okay. Um, I'm curious about something, Christopher. Uh, yes. Stephen King, what do you think they're trying to get out of him for a, for a house? Well, Stephen King, for many years, has been on record saying that he will not do haunted house attractions. Yep. So um, He's always been against them. I think that he has a, a misconception, perhaps, that they are all a bit gaudy and a bit low rent, a bit tacky, which, you know, there are a lot that are. But, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. Halloween Horror Nights, just plain simple, are not like that. They are... Nope. A, Totally league above everything else. Um, so I think if he could be 
uh, if he could have his arm twisted, then you know perhaps they will look to to see which films that he has say over. You know because people think that he has say over The Shining. The, what I'm told is that no, is the no. Kubrick estate, and that's the reason why it came to Halloween Horror Nights. They didn't have to go through Stephen King. I'd love to see an original that he pens that has nothing to do with because his movies don't really reflect. Okay, wait, maybe it. <laughs> it would be good. <laughs> yeah. I'd be okay with it. Now that I'd, Warner Brothers isn't doing their house over in Hollywood, you know, maybe we can get it. Well, I'd be strange, okay with Maximum Overdrive. With st- stand by me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the really annoying thing with it is I believe it, it has the same status as The Shining. It's one of these yeah. ones where he doesn't have much say over it anymore. Right, right. That's what I mean. But like, the, you the annoying thing Warner is Warner Brothers does have a lot of say over it. Right. You know, so it's up to them. And, and, you know, last year when they were doing their own thing, they didn't want it to be, go anywhere near Halloween Horror Nights. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So maybe well, next year, now that they realize that they are better off just licensing, maybe we, when the sequel comes out, maybe we'll actually see a, an it house. So uh, yeah. Here just, first. <laughs> so excited for that sequel, too. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to see the giant space turtle. Come on, giant space turtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think that wraps up uh, all the, unless you guys have any other um, speculation or guesses on houses um, or scare zones or it's definitely no. some exciting things. I am looking forward. I'm going to do an RIP tour for the first time this year. Oh, wow. Um, so mm. I am super, super excited. They are hands down the best thing you can do at the event um like this with it getting busier and busier um i was already thinking about getting express because it's the lines are so crazy so um being able to actually do the tour too is going to be so fun yeah i think it was 2014 i had to wait over an hour for express pass in one line and then i went no i'm doing rip from now on wow even just for the express line yeah so i was like no rip all the way now so i haven't i've always done rip now now, of course, we'll talk about Halloween Horror Nights more in the coming months. It is still not even the summer. <laughs> uh, yes. we're, we're just early May here. Um, but it was great having you on. Before we go, Christopher, do you have anything else you're working on you'd like to talk about? Um, I've just finished uh, a new book. It's uh, an anthology book uh, of different tales that we put together. And I've been working on it with uh, Shelby Denham, who um, you know many of you will know. She's a you know, mm-hmm. great artist, and she's done lots of illustrations for the book. Um, we're just waiting on some technical things to be sorted out, but I'm hoping that I'll be released in the next week or so. Um, if you go to hhnunofficial.com uh, forward slash shop, uh, we've got some air fresheners, which have oh, <laughs> yeah. driving are you doing, me are they, are they mad. Did you, did you sell out already? We sold out the first batch, um, and then we, we ordered more, and now that's nearly sold out. So these so, smell like Halloween Horror Nights. Like you remember what, how, like, is it the, the, the mix of the wood and the fog? Because that's what I always think of. Well, that's exactly what I was trying to do. We, we, went, um, we went to this factory uh, in London and the guy, uh, he supplies commercial scents basically for all sorts of things. I mean, even mm-hmm. like haunted house attractions, I, th- I think. And he, we told him the brief that we wanted it to smell that kind of wood timber kind of lumber kind of smell because obviously the sets they they have that kind yeah, of the plywood smell. the smoky kind of dry ice smell and then i threw in fear and pizza fries as a joke <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said yeah yeah we can do all that so he's combined all of those and i've got one hanging in my car and i can definitely smell the wood and i can definitely smell the smoke but i can't smell the fear or the pizza frost. That's in your memories as you smell. <laughs> yeah. The fear I'm slightly worried about, because sometimes fear for me, I can smell when people at the event smells like vape fluid, you know? Um, <laughs> but even like psychoscarapy, a couple of years running, they, they've obviously had lots of smells. But one of the smells they had in there was poo. Was Oh, know, no. There's been a lot of houses that have the poo smell. The, the old <laughs> yeah, so, one had the poo smell. I'm not a fan yeah. of the smell yeah i mean even like that vomit smell they had in the exorcist house that was just ugh. so it hasn't got any of those this is a pleasant smell no but the plywood and the and the fog effect I, is definitely quintessential that's what that'll take me back instantly so it's so awesome yeah. that you're offering that and i'm glad that they're going to be continually in stock you're not going to run out run out are you no 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 the, the uh, we just have to wait each time we order some so. okay awesome and where, where it's um what did you say the url was 
It's uh, hhnunofficial.com forward slash shop. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out because you know I'm big on things like that. <laughs> if you, um, yeah, I was make, quite surprised. If you make the poo and vomit, let me know so I can send some to Alicia. No. No. <laughs> no. I actually will look up beforehand to see what houses are using that and skip them. That's how much I hate that. No, it, it, it lodges itself in your nose and it never leaves and it's terrible. But Pizza Rizzo is um, okay. Pizza Rizzo is the best. Aww. So thank you so much, Christopher Ripley. Um, check out uh, his website, hhnunofficial.com. Where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, at Christopher Rip. Okay. Oh, like RIP. I like it. RIP, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't allowed L-E-Y. You weren't allowed it? No. <laughs> um, all right. That's going to do it for this episode. Great. Bye. Thank you. Happy nightmares. <laughs> See ya.